Okay, our first type of special right triangle is an isosceles right triangle. These are all isosceles right triangles. Isosceles just means you have two congruent legs, right? Now, if you think about this, in um, an isosceles right triangle, I know my base angles are going to be congruent, okay? And since I've got 90 degrees right up there, i got another 90 degrees um, to go split between these two. So that means these are going to be 45 degrees. So in an isosceles triangle, that's that's going to be true in all of these, all isosceles right triangles. So these are sometimes referred to as 45, 45, 90 triangles. Those would be isosceles right triangles. Okay. All right. So let's solve for x here. Now this is a right triangle, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. And my legs would be um, the threes. And then x is the c because that's the hypotenuse across from the right angle. Okay, so then I'd have 9 plus 9 equals x squared. So 18 equals x squared. And so x will equal the square root of 18. Okay, now let's put that in simple radical form. So I'm going to think of multiplication problem. How about 2 times 9? And then 9, I could break up into 3 times 3, like so. Okay, and then I got a pair of twins, so one of those will get out. And one dies, and then the two doesn't have a twin, so it's stuck in there. So this is going to be three root two in simple radical form. Okay. Now, once you get you go ahead and try this one. It's very similar over here. Just uh, I've got fives instead of threes. You can pause the video if you like. I'm just going to get straight to it using the Pythagorean theorem. That's what I'd have. Fifty equals x squared. That means x is the square root of fifty. That would be five times ten would be fifty, or five times five times two. And then I got a pair of twins here, and this is going to be five root two in simple radical form. Okay. So wait a second. I'm seeing kind of a pattern looking at these two problems. Okay. So when the leg was 3, the hypotenuse was 3 root 2. When the leg was 5, the hypotenuse was 5 root 2. So when the leg is 976, the hypotenuse is going to be 976 root 2. That will always work out. Now, if you, um, you could do the Pythagorean theorem here. Nothing wrong with that, but that's where we're going to end up. And that's going to hold true for all um, 45, 45, 90 triangles. Okay, so at the bottom of this paper, I don't know why I put it at the bottom, but I've got a, uh, I've got this little pattern here. So if, um, if the leg is x, then I'd multiply it by the square root of 2 to get the hypotenuse. That's going to work for all 45, 45, 90 triangles, all isosceles right triangles, okay? So um, if I have the leg and I want to get the hypotenuse, I'm going to multiply um, by the square root of 2. Okay? But what if I'm going the other direction, like I am on these two problems? On these two problems, I don't know what the legs are. I know what the hypotenuse is. Well, instead of multiplying by root 2, I'm going to take the hypotenuse and divide by the square root of 2. And if you forget it, to multiply or divide, just think the hypotenuse is the longest, right? So if I have the hypotenuse, the leg should be shorter, so I'm going to divide. If I have the leg, hypotenuse should be longer, so I'm going to multiply, okay? So now looking at, um, at well, let's, let's try this one. So here, oh, I've got the hypotenuse, and I want to get the leg, so I'm going to divide by the square root of 2 instead of multiplying. So x here will equal... 7 divided by the square root of 2. I'm just going to write that as a fraction. okay? And that's correct, except it's not in simple radical form. If you remember, you can't have a radical in the denominator. So I'm going to clone a twin for the 2, since there isn't a twin down there, like so. That's OK, as long as I do the same thing to the top. And then I'll multiply straight across. 
and root 2 times root 2 I can write like so. And now I can simplify this. So ran out of space here. But this is going to be 7 root 2 over 2. And then I'm just thinking, are the fractions reduced? Yeah, you can't reduce the 2s because one of them is in a radical and one isn't. Okay. All right, same kind of deal here. I'm thinking, oh, I've got the hypotenuse, so I want to divide. I'll write that over there so it doesn't get in the way. I want to divide by the square root of 2. Okay, so let's try this here. So x is going to equal square root of 3 divided by the square root of 2. Okay, now it's okay to have a, a radical in the numerator, and there's no twins in there, but I can't have one in, <coughs> in the denominator. And since there's no twins, I've got to clone my own twin for the 2. Okay, that's what I have on top. On bottom, I've got this. And then I can simplify this. Okay, on top, there's no twins. So the best I can do on the top is the square root of 6. But that's okay. I can have a radical in the, in the numerator as long as it's uh, in simple radical form. Okay? All right. So that's 45, 45, 90 triangles. That's our first type of special right triangle, but it's not the only type. Um, next up is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. That's the second type. Okay. Look at that for a second. Um, so here's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and this has um, another relationship. So um, here, um, these are my two legs, okay? Um, and um, I've got my hypotenuse. So that's my hypotenuse, obviously, across from the right angle. My two legs um, in the 45, 5, 45, 90s, they're congruent. Here they're not. So on these ones, we have what I call a short leg and the long leg. It's always going to work like that when you have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay? And then this relationship is always going to hold true as well. If you have the short leg and you want the hypotenuse, you double it. Okay? So go in this direction, you multiply by 2. Okay, if you have the short leg and you want the long leg, you're going to multiply by the square root of 3. So this would be x root 3. I'm going to multiply by the square root of 3. Okay, and you need to just memorize those relationships. Okay, it's super important for what we're going to be doing in trigonometry. And it's easy to mix up because there's a lot of different multiplying that we're doing. And, you know, in 45, 45, 90s, we multiply by root 2. In 30, 60, 90s, multiply by root 3. The way I think of it, 30, 60, 90, 3 goes into all those. So that's kind of how I remember I'm multiplying by root 3. But um, you still got to remember which direction. Okay, so let's put this into um, to action. So the best... Uh, my favorite side of a 30, 60, 90 to have is the short leg. And I've got it here, right? I know the short leg is 5. So that's nice because I'm just multiplying to get the other pieces in. Okay? So I'm thinking, oh, going to double. So x is 10. Okay? And if I have the short leg, I want the long leg. I'm going to multiply by the square root of 3. So this would be 5 root 3. So it's pretty straightforward if you remember what to multiply by when you have the short leg. Okay, It gets a little bit more difficult um, when we've got one of the other pieces. So in this um, problem over here, I'm thinking, um, oh, and by the way, if, if you want to know what the short leg and the long leg are, sometimes it's easy to tell, but you know it might be a bad drawing. But remember the shortest um, side is going to be across from the shortest angle. So the short legs is always across from the 30 degrees. The long legs always across from the 60 degrees. Okay. So looking at this one, I can see, oh, this is my long leg. Okay. Now, anytime I don't have the short leg, I want to get it as soon as I can. Okay. So I'm not going to try to go straight from the long leg to the, the hypotenuse. I want to go, you always go through the short leg. Okay. So remember when I'm going short leg to long leg, I'm multiplying by the square root of 3, right? So going the opposite direction, it should be getting shorter. I'm not going to multiply. Then I'm going to divide. I'm going to divide here by the square root of 3, okay? So then x 
is going to be, let me use this space up here. So x would be um, 7 divided by the square root of 3. Still need simple radical form though. So let's clone a twin down there. And then one of those will get out. And then okay, I'm going to end up with 7 root 3 over 3. Okay, so that's what x equals. Okay, put that in down here just so I have it in the picture. Okay, now once I've got the short leg, this is my short leg. Not that you have to write those down every time, right? I'm just doing that to explain. But once I have the short leg, I'm, I'm going to double it to get the hypotenuse. Okay, so y, I'm going to take 7 root 3 over 3. I'm going to double that. So I can just write times 2, but you could also think of that like so, right? Um, so I'm writing it like this because some people, when they double 7 root 3 over 3, they'll write it as 14 root 3 over 6, but that's incorrect because then they multiply the top and bottom by 2, which means you're really multiplying by 1. So I'm just really multiplying the numerator by 2, okay? So this is going to give me 14 root 3 over 3, and that's what y equals in this problem, okay? All right, so I think those are the probably the ones that the the versions that people miss the most because you got to divide by root three, and that means definitely you're going to have to put it in simple radical form, and then do another step. Okay, so number five is another. Sorry, it's not number five. Uh, this problem is another one where we have this is going to be the long leg. So you can pause it and try this one out. It's similar to the last problem, right? So I'm just going to get to it. I want the short leg, so let's divide by root three. So that means x is going to equal 5 over root 3. Okay, and hopefully you're getting quick with uh, simplifying those. That denominator will just come out to 3. So that's what x equals, 5 root 3 over 3. Okay, and then I want to double that to get y. So y is going to equal, instead of 5 root 3 over 3, it will be 10 root 3 over 3. Okay. All right, this last one, this time I've got the hypotenuse. Okay. So I want to get the short leg as quickly as I can. I double the, the short leg to get the hypotenuse. So going the other direction, I'm going to take half of the hypotenuse. So x would be 3. And then short leg to long leg, multiply by root 3. So this is 3 root 3. Okay. All right. And then, um, so those are the two, two special types of right triangles, 45, 45, 90s, and then the 30, 60, 90s. Okay. So this next example's got a little of both of those. It's both combined. All right. We're going to solve for um, x, y, w, and z. Okay. So let's think what we got here. Well, hey, if this is 90 degrees, so is this, right? And then, oh, 60, 90, this must be 30 then to get to 180. And 45, 90, this must be 45, okay? Um, all right. Oh, and I needed to give one of the, uh, there's some missing info. We have, have to know, and I'll fix this on the note-taking guide, but this should say 3 down there, otherwise it'd be stuck. Okay. So let's say we know this was 3, and we'll, now we're solving for the variables. So first thing I'm thinking, oh, okay, on my 45, 45, 90, the two legs are going to be congruent. So, hey, x is 3. One down, okay? And then let's just stick with this 45, 45, 90. So when I'm going that way, I'm going to multiply by the square root of 2, which means y would equal 3 root 2. Okay, two down. All right, so now let's start working on the 30, 60, 90. Now I've got one of the sides of the 30, 60, 90, right? So I'm looking at this triangle now, okay? So this is the long leg. So to go from the long leg to the short leg, I'm going to divide by the square root of 3 on a 30, 60, 90. So z would equal 3 over root 3. So 
Uh, let's see, three root three over three. Now this one I can reduce, right? I can reduce this part of it. Three over three is one. So z is just gonna equal root three. Okay, and then going from short leg to hypotenuse, double it. So w, this is root three, this is gonna be two root three. Okay, and I can see on my next problem, I also left off the given piece of info, where, so we're supposed to know that this section is five right there, and I'll fix that on the guide again. Okay, so same kind of deal. We just got a 30, 60, 90, and a 45, 45, 90. So um, let's, I always just start with the side I have. So let's see, this is the short um, leg, because this would be 90 and this would be 30 degrees. Okay, that's the short leg. So going from short to hypotenuse, we're going to double. So R is 10. Going from short leg to long leg, we're going to multiply by root 3. So Q will equal 5 root 3. Okay. And then, hey, I've got a 45, 45, 90. If we look at this triangle, okay, means both my legs are congruent. So then this is just 5 root 3, just like Q is. Okay? And then going from leg to hypotenuse, we'll multiply by the square root of 2. So S is going to equal 5 root 3 times root 2. Okay? Now the parts under the radical. You can put them under the same roof. Then I want to see if there's any twins down there. There's not. So this is going to be 5 root 6. Okay. All right. And then on to this last page. Um, here we've got a problem. A square has side lengths of four meters. Find the length of the diagonal. Well, let's just sketch in one of the diagonals. Both the diagonals are going to have the same length, by the way, so you can sketch in either one. All right. Well, hey, if this is a square, then all of the um, angles are 90 degrees, so got that. Okay, and then also, wait a second. Hey, those are congruent, so that means that both halves of this square, when you cut it diagonally like that, that's going to be an isosceles right triangle. So hey, that means it's a 45, 45, 90. Okay? So once you realize that, then you just have to know, okay, I've got the leg. How do I get the hypotenuse? I'm going to multiply by the square root of 2. So that means that this is going to be 4 root 2. Okay? So my answer is going to be 4 root 2, but I want to put the units in there, since all the rest is in meters. That should be two, okay? All right, and then we've got um, an equilateral triangle. Okay, an equilateral triangle, um, all of the angles are gonna be 60 degrees. Okay, and um, we're asked to find the area. So one half base times height. But remember your base and your height have to be perpendicular, so I don't, None of my sides are perpendicular, so I can't use like 4 and 4 for my base and height. That's not going to work. Okay, So let's say I'm using this as the base. Well, then the height related to that base would look like this. Okay. Now, if you think about it, the two halves of that triangle are congruent because you could use reflexive to get that congruent to itself. We've got the right angles, and then these are congruent. So hypotenuse leg tells me those are congruent um, triangles. Why do I care about that? Well, that means that those two angles at the top are congruent, so my 60 degrees is going to be cut in half. And that's good news, because now we've got 30, 60, 90s. Okay? So anytime you slice a, uh, an equilateral triangle in half like that, you'll get two 30, 60, 90 triangles. Okay. And not only that, that also allows me to say that these two segments would be congruent. So that means that 4 is split nicely in half like that. Okay. And the reason I wanted to do that is because I, I already have a base to use for this height, but I, this triangle, but I need this height. 
Okay, and now I can find that. So just use one of the half triangles, like one of the 30, 60, 90s. So I'll use that one. So this is the short leg. I'd want to multiply by the square root of 3. So I'm going to take 2 times the square root of 3 on a 30, 60, 90. Now I've got a height to go with this base. And now it's just the area formula for a triangle. So that's 1 half base times height. Base is 4. Often I accidentally use 2, but I want the area of the whole thing, not the, not the half triangle, right? All right, so half of 4 is 2. And then 2 times 2 root 3 would be 4 root 3, okay? And my units are metered, and it's area, so it's actually going to be that many square meters, okay? And that is the end of the section.